When fat people blame their fatness on genetics, we see this as a huge cop-out. Sure, there are some genetic diseases that will cause you to get fat no matter what. However, these are relatively uncommon. What about all those people who worked hard to lose their weight? Because in the end, while we accept genetics as being somewhat limiting, the golden rule still stands. You only get out what you put in. Well, as you'll see, we are vastly underestimating the role of genetics in obesity. Just as a warning, the following studies aren't easy to swallow. Okay, to start off, let's look at this study of 37,000 pairs of twins. The aim of the study was to figure out why some people end up fatter than others. To tease out the effects of genetics, researchers compared identical twins, i.e. those who shared 100% of their DNA, to fraternal twins, i.e. those who shared 50% of their DNA. Now, if their living environment was to blame, we should expect similar rates of obesity in fraternal and identical twins. The fact that identical twins share more of their DNA doesn't make a difference in this case because genetics don't impact your weight. However, if genetics did have an impact, we should expect identical twins to be more alike than fraternal twins. Using this logic, researchers analyzed 28 different datasets. Each of these datasets spat out a different estimate as shown in this graph, but overall, genetics accounted for somewhere between 45 and 85% of the reason for why some people are fatter than others, which is huge. Using the same measure, depression's heritability is only 50%. Now, you could say that being born with bad genes isn't the end. Ultimately, it's about whether you're disciplined enough to eat healthy and exercise, right? Well, genetics plays a role here too. One of the better experiments to show this involves 14 pairs of obese identical twins. For four weeks, researchers carefully controlled their diet and exercise. In terms of diet, everyone was only allowed to drink 400 calories of diet milkshake per day. In terms of exercise, everyone performed the same daily amount as overseen by an exercise physiologist. Then everyone weighed in. Here's what the data looked like. So for example, this dot means that in the first pair, both twins lost about 6 kilos. Now, there's a lot of variation, with some twins losing 6 kilos and others losing 12. But what's important is that the amount of weight you lost was almost identical to the amount your twin lost, i.e. if you had the same genes, you lost the same weight. This suggests that genetics largely determines how your body responds to diet and exercise. The last argument I'll make is that other behaviours, such as your level of self-control, your level of metabolism, and even how big your appetite is, have all been linked back to genetics using that same twin study technique I mentioned earlier. Now, these genetic studies have some of the strongest effect sizes within psychology, and yet they're rarely mentioned in the media. And you can see why. If we accept them as fact, then it means that a significant part of obesity is dictated by something we have no control over. So how should we react to this? Well, perhaps the situation with obesity is comparable to mental illness. Both are health-related issues. Yet, when it comes to mental illness, we accept that it is largely heritable and acknowledge how hard it can be to work through such problems. Consequently, we are more sympathetic towards the mentally ill. However, when it comes to obesity, any times genetics is mentioned, it seems to be swept away as a weak excuse. As a result, we are more critical of them when they fail to lose weight. Not surprisingly, studies have shown that weight discrimination only makes it harder for obese people to lose weight. So, while it's disheartening how genetics affects obesity, we shouldn't try to dismiss it. Perhaps the best thing we can do is to acknowledge this fact and remain supportive for those trying to lose weight.